Howdy everyone, today we're going to go over another expansion for the Kingdom Death uh, lot that I got. I know it's been a while, I've been fighting off cold and then Easter and all that, but here I am, we're going to do another one. And today we're going to take a look at the Dragon King expansion. Uh, again, like the other ones, it has the same box, thin cardboard, matte image on the front. Let's take a look inside it. Lots of stuff in here. Let's get all the packing peanuts out of the way at first. In this expansion, I, the pictures on the Kickstarter showed a very, very large figure. So I'm really excited to see what this one looks like in the box. And holy crap, it looks like it's a ton of stuff in here. Hold on, let's see. It's a huge bag in the front. Look at that base, holy cow. Stuff in here, packing peanuts all the way. Alright. There's a card. We'll get to that second. There's some more cards. We'll get to those in a second as well. I'm not sure if this guy is a nemesis monster or not. But we'll take a look at his stuff in a little bit. And so there's the box. I have this little insert back here with the book. Let's get that out of there. There, oh, there's, there's also some tiles, new tiles as well. So this is a two-sided, uh, it looks like pillars on one side and then lava on the other, or whatever that is, I don't know. And then these are, looks like some kind of tokens of uh, humanoids. So we'll take a look at that in a second. First, I want to take a look at this massive bag. Holy cow. So this bag has enough sprues and other stuff that it took up the majority of the inside of the box. And to give you an idea on how big this creature is, look at this this base right here. Holy cow. Uh, I'll my knife here to open it real quick. We'll take a look at each of these individual ones. Alright, so let's get this guy out of there. That is an absolutely massive base. Again, it comes with in, it, it, uh, it detaches like that because it's just the base and the insert. This is the uh, classic emblem on the bottom. More bases there. Let's take a look at this stuff. <clears throat> and the way I understand it is that this dragon actually has a dragon form and a humanoid form. God, look at these wings! They're huge. So there's the wings of the dragon. Massive, massive wings. Oh, what's this? A little bit of dirt or like factory smudge on there. Whatever. Uh, like there's some of the horns, body parts. There's like his, his chest cavity pieces. This is going to be a really exciting build. This guy is going to be massive. This, I'm gonna guess that this is the main body of him. Yep. So this is the main body. Here's the front of him. That's where those chest cavities go. Right here, it looks like. Uh, and then this is probably the back side of him. And the cool thing I like about these is that his his uh, his wings uh, in the pictures it actually showed them coming off of his fingers. So it's like his fingers are wrapped around, and then the wings come up behind him like that, which is an interesting take on the, the dragon. Let's put that over there, let's see, let's look at more bases, there's more dragon parts. God, look at his, there's his face right there. You guys can see that. On two sides there, there's feet. I guess that that's maybe part of his tail or body or something. Yeah, so here's one of his hands, right here, and like there's his thumb, and then like, the way I've seen it, it's like the uh, the wings kind of come off like this, or in some way. I'm not sure how yet. There. Have to look at that in a second. Those look like armor pieces, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. Yeah. So here's here's the tails, the two side halves of that. Here's the other side of his hands. So this looks like it would kind of go on. Oh, get off. You know, kind of like that. 
for this guy. Like if you see this this piece here, this piece right here, I'm gonna go like that. I'm gonna guess, and then you know, then the, then the dragon wing attaches to that somehow as well, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> but God, look at the like giant horn or spikes coming off of that tails again. Let's get a look at this stuff. So I know as part of this set or this expansion, he comes with uh, some armor sets. Or a new armor set, which is pretty cool. So here's the armor set. Or one of the sprues, it looks like. There's the, you know, the bottom, the legs and the torso. Or the legs and the waist right there. Uh, some arms. Um, this probably looks like the skirts or whatever you wear. There's the chest pieces here. That's kind of neat, though. I like the, the little spikes. There's the fronts of them. They're just kind of open-chested. And then the backs of them looks like they have a little bit of the dragon coverings on them or you got some alternative chest pieces over here and I like here's there's little heads etc uh, it looks like this sprue has most of the weapons there's the, one of the weapons there some big looking scimitars some hands on like little rings here I wonder if that's gonna be like uh, like the Xena warrior princess like throwing disc that she had that was always pretty cool. Uh, looks like we're going to get a new shield in here. Um, and I have no idea what this is, but this looks like a freaking scythe. That looks awesome. Um, more hands, more helmets, more armor pieces. All very confusing. Ooh, arrows, too. See them right here. Alright, so then the next sprue here... It says Dragon People. So, okay, so this looks like the the makings of his humanoid form, the front and back. There's this little headdress that he's got going on. Oh man, that's gonna be really fragile. Open off. Um, he's got like a little crooked staff. Extra long fingers on the staff. That's kind of neat. You can see them a little bit here too. I don't know. You got little crooked long fingers. Um, where's his head? Something I haven't seen yet. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there's his head right there. And there we go. Alright, so there's his head. And then it looks like he gets a couple dragon people as well, so... I don't know how these guys all fit into it yet. So you got a male and a female that you can put together as well. So that's kind of cool. Overall, surprised about how many, by how many sprues you actually get from this set. But uh, I think this is going to be a really great project to build. It's going to be a while before I build this guy, though. I'm, I'm still finishing up the monsters from the core set. Uh, let's check out the book again. There's the here's the Dragon King book. Got the emblem on the front. Uh, actually, has about a decent number of pages in here. Let's take a look at them. <clears throat> Here it tells you all the cards and new things you get. Uh, how to upgrade and add to your campaign as per the other expansions. Uh, looks like we get a pretty cool little story event here. There's the showdown with the Dragon King. Um, Oh, okay, so he is not a nemesis. He is actually uh, a hunt that you can go on because you get basic resources here. That's kind of neat. Good to know. Uh, ooh. Some special story events, special other events. Intimacy, again. Is this a new intimacy? Okay, so this is a new intimacy event. That's kind of neat. It changes that up a little bit. Uh... Some other story events, blah blah blah. We're not gonna go through all this stuff because I mean, if you're, if you know, I'm gonna show off a little bit of it, and if you're interested in it, buy the expansion because all this stuff is very high quality, very detailed, very very interesting and fun to play. Faces in the sky, no idea what that is. The tomb, that's a pretty cool picture there. And special stuff on that. Ooh. Are these the same? Or are these 
any different. Okay, so these are actually a little bit different. So here's a here's a new record sheet that you get. Uh, it looks like you get some new um, uh, some new events in here that unfold, uh, and you get let's see anything else. Mm, not here, but you also get a new. I don't know if you guys can see that. All right, but you get a new settlement sheet that has a new storyline for your settlement. So instead of, you know, the regular st storyline, you get, you know, a couple new events in here with a Nemesis a Dragon... Oh, the Nemesis Encounter Dragon King. No, oh, I guess he is a Nemesis Encounter then. I don't know. That's weird. That's odd that he's a Nemesis, but then also gives away resources. But who am I to judge? Uh, and it has the same things, Endless Screams, Phoenix Feather, you know, Convictions... But there's no there's no watcher on here. That's interesting. So this is a whole new timeline, and then your settlement location looks like you start with a dragon throne. That's kind of neat. Which uh, we'll get into in a little bit. And are these all these are all the same over here? It looks like too. Okay. So there's that. Oh, there was a the last page to this. Let's see. It was on the very last page. Say anything. Uh, just the back of that settlement sheet. Okay. So there's that. New settlement sheet, new character sheet in the Dragon King expansion. Uh, now, we get these cards. It seemed odd that they didn't provide a new... Oh! It's, it's in the box. It was hiding. I knew I was missing something. I was talking about settlement locations, I didn't see anything. Okay, so it looks like at this bag, if you're dividers for the Dragon King gear, Dragon King cards, and you got a new settlement, lo uh, settlement location that you can build. Okay, so those are just the divide cards, so we don't need to look at them, but we st it says we start with the Dragon Throne. There's the Dragon Throne, so this is... Uh, you start with the same three uh, locations, Bonesmith, Organ Grinder, Skinnery. You have your same innovation, but then it looks like you have a special thing here. And then the Dragon Army, where Armory, which holds the Dragon Armor. And some new weapons and items, which we'll get into in the cards. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so here's some secret fighting arts. Here's some more disorders, because we all love disorders. Am I right, guys? Here's some new innovations. Right, so there's innovations. And here's all of the AI cards. Hit locations. Man, I'm gonna have a blast sleeving all of these. Can you tell the sarcasm? So, yeah, here's all of his cards. Let's check out the Distorters first. Again, they have a special crest here for the Dragon King. Uh, Orange with a little Dragon King crest, it looks like. And so, Destined, Arithmophilia, Performance Anxiety, Superstitious. But interesting thing here is that the, of these disorders, Destined is actually an orange. So I wonder if that's going to play into this in some way throughout the campaign. Uh, new innovations. Let's see what we got in here. Uh, again, this is the same crest to be able to tell which ones are which, or apart from other... other uh, Mansions. Let's see what we got. We got uh, Bloodline. Uh, <clears throat> home, and it's a Hovel Consequence, so it's a new Hovel Consequence. Uh, Empire. Uh, ooh, newborn survivors are born with plus one permanent strength on the pristine ability. When you suffer dis dismembered, ignore it, and you get a bleeding token instead. Oh, that's really cool. So when you get dismembered, you just get a bleeding token. Awesome. Uh, arena, so you can spar with somebody. Just don't roll a one or a two because then you're dead, as per most of one and two results in this game. Uh, radiating orb, so this provides heat. So this is a little bit different than the lantern oven. It still adds the lantern oven's consequences, but it looks like you can have a different option other than uh, heat. Although I 
wonder if this is acceptable to replace anything that requires uh, lantern oven innovation, as some things might. Uh, and then finally, dragon speech. So uh, this looks like it's an, an alternative to the language consequence. And then, uh, you know, because it has most of the same things here. So there's the innovations. Let's check out his secret fighting arts. Uh, we have two of them. One is a purple, and one is an orange. It, although it looks like the purple has the, or the, while the orange has the dragon uh, king uh, humanoid form, it looks like the purple might have his monster form. Um, altered destiny, if you would gain a negative attribute token, gain a positive attribute token instead, that's pretty cool. That'll be fun in fights that are like, uh, what is it, the Kingsman, who gives you minus one movement due to his battle pressure. You just gain plus one movement with this. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, Frozen Star. Once per round, you can spend a survival to freeze a monster's brain. They gain minus two accuracy until the end of the round. Ooh, that's really cool. Uh, once per round, you may spend one survival to freeze a survivor's brain, killing them instantly. They die. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm not sure why you would want that, but yet. But I'm sure there might be something in the game that says that that encourages survivor versus survivor combat. But this this first part of that is pretty awesome. Secret fighting iron minus two accuracy to the end of the round. That'll make that'll make things a lot nicer for some monsters out there. <clears throat> so there's those secret fighting arts. Uh, hit locations. Let's see what he's got here. Um, looks like he actually has a little bit of critical wounds. There's a nemesis monster, that's, you know, I, I should stop saying that because it's becoming more incompetent, like things like that. Uh, celestial robe, celestial test, celestial blah, 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 blah. So first strike, first strike, first strike, wow. So he's got a lot of first strike in here. And then, uh, I don't know what this purple icon means yet. It's a lot of... These cards have them, though. I'll have to, you know, again, if you want to know more about that, uh, leave a comment, and I'll try to do some research for you, or, you know, just pick up the game expansion and uh, check it out for yourself. Some, some super dense spots, Celestial Gauntlet, Celestial sac Scarred Heart, ooh, here's his trap, Resonance Cascade, Perform a Crooked Step, no idea what that means. Uh, blah, blah, blah... Alright, I want to know what these things in the back do. So more critical wounds, critical wounds, critical wounds. Cosmic uppercut. Oh, he's got two traps. Ooh, wait. Oh, okay, 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 I see. So this, this hit location deck is actually two hit location decks. So one is for the humanoid, and then the other one is for the, dra the, the dragon form. So that's an, a, dis a distinction notice. So I'm going to guess that they're both roughly this size. So they have a trap in each of them. And, uh, and it looks like he gets some, the, the dragon form gets some special abilities here. So let's check out these. Uh, microwave Heart has a reflex performer radiate. And then Engulf in Light, first strike impervient. Impervious, and then also perform Radiate. Great. Wonderful. That all sounds fun, I'm sure. Your Radiate is probably just, uh, you die. Explode. Burn from the inside out, even. Okay, hold on. Is this... Okay, so that's... The Resonance Cascade is his humanoid form trap, and Cosmic Uppercut is the dragon form trap. Uh, yeah, so that looks like it'll be fun. So these are all AI cards of the same kind. They all have the this this Dragon King monster symbol on it, not the humanoid. Oh, here's a Radiate right here. Uh, the monster gains a minus one toughness token. Huh. If it has five or more minus one toughness tokens, its heart is exposed and perform meltdown. Otherwise, perform unseen agony. Great. Uh, all right, so that's his AI cards. Uh, Mournful Swerve, Ash in Return, Glowing Fizz. He's got moods, durations, 
the all around badness. So there's those. Let's do these next. All right. So there's his information cards. You got level one, two, three. His instinct is to his core countdown. Full move towards the closest threat. Perform a radiate, and then end the dragon's king's turn. So that's kind of neat. Uh, it looks like his irradiate is going to be the core focus of his thing. So maybe he gets easier to hit as it goes on, but then I'm sure meltdown, you know, is not good at the end of it. Um, dragon armor set. There it shows you the dragon armor pieces required. You add one to all hit locations, which is interesting because that doesn't seem like that much. And then. You get the you get the ability to leap, uh, leap into the air, place your survivor in unoccupied space, exactly five spaces away in a straight line, and then activate a melee weapon with plus two accuracy and plus five strength. Holy cow, that's awesome! Oh, the tyrant. <clears throat> so this is I'm gonna guess is the actual monster form, or maybe this is the. Okay, so it has little water marks on here of the humanoid. So the tyrant is the humanoid. The Dragon King is actual monster form. So his instinct is to advance, uh, perform a crooked step, we'll move the monster toward the closest survivor and end the monster's turn. Uh, this guy, not too bad, it looks like. Maybe he's the, uh, maybe he's the one you, you can hunt. Uh, oh, Scythe, that points to, signs point to yes on that Scythe. So we have a new mastery and weapon specialization for Scythe. So we Scythe weapons come into play in this. So that'll be pretty cool. What are these? What are these? What are these? Witch, Storm, Rust, Reaper, Goblin, Gambler, and Absolute. Huh. So, I don't know what these are, but it seems like it's almost like a deck of many things, or like maybe you draw a card at some point, record an archive, you get some kind of boon or bane. Of course, uh, this one is probably ooh, this one is probably a a bad one. Um, here's the recording archive. Here's the witch, storm, sculptor, rust, reaper, goblin, and gambler, and the absolute. Not sure what these are yet, but uh, I'm sure it'll go over that in the book somewhere, or maybe in these cards here. <clears throat> and what are these? Oh, terrain cards. So let's check these out. Okay, so we got some strange resources, Dragon King resources, Dragon King hunt events, fighting arts. Oh, okay, so here's the, here's his a other AI deck for the humanoid form. Gotcha, I gotcha. I'm following now. Alright, so there's those for that, there's those for that. They got two AI decks for both of the monsters, so they don't share it apparently. Um, Tyrant, Terrain, no. That's interesting. So you have two Terrain cards. Lava Pool and Obsidian Towers. Two Terrain cards, Lava Pool, Obsidian Towers. And then you have this Tyrant card with a, with a humanoid form on it. I'm not sure what that it does yet, but... It says gate. Oh, that's that's the uh, those humanoid tokens over there. So that's what this. Is. Um, apparently, you roll on table or smash open the gates or whatever, and things can happen from there. So that sounds fun. This is interesting. That's it's like it's, it, it comes with two different things to play it. That you can add to your to your settlement. Uh, hunt events. See, strange resources, shining liver, pituitary gland, and radiant heart. Oh, great. When you gain this resource, roll a d10 on a three or higher, you burst into flames and die. So, that's always going to be fun. At least you still get the heart, I assume. Right? It's just somebody might die. Good to know. Uh, so, there's those. Gate. Put these over here. I'm trying to keep all the cards here so you can see them all. Uh, so then these are the hunt events. 
So this is only the Dragon King that you have hunt events for. No humanoid tyrant versions. Uh, and so Doppel Den, Lord Keeper, Settlement Ruins, uh, Majestic Shadow, Thes Thesbian Troop, uh, Cultivated Crypt, Lava Flow, and Ornate Temple. We won't get into these because I'm going to leave some of those a mystery for my players. <clears throat> as well as all the other AI decks and hit locations and stuff like that. Uh, so then here's his resource deck. You got some Horn Fragments, King's Claws, ooh, Husk, so those are Hide, Bones, Husks are a Hide, Veined Wing is a Hide, uh, Cabled Vein is an Organ, Radioactive Dung is an Organ and also a Scrap, ooh, so you can smelt those down. Make some poopy iron. Hardened ribs for bone, king's tongue hide, and dragon iron. Iron. That's pretty neat. And then <clears throat> we have some, we have four new fighting arts, with, again with a crest. Uh, Faded blow, acrobatics, unbreakable, and champion's right. And also worth noting that for some reason here, Acrobatics is different colored than the other ones. Not sure why. I don't know if it's a printing error or not, but maybe it's meant to be different. I don't know. Alright, let's take a look at the gear. Alright, so here's the gear cards. We got some Dragon Vestments. Uh, add one to all hit locations. Gain a random, when you gain a random fighting art, select a dragon trait one instead. Huh. Dragon trait. I wonder what that means. Maybe that's maybe that's one of these. So you got some of those. Celestial Spear, a 254 with reach 2. And then you gain 5 strength when attacking with his weapon if you have a constellation. I want to guess that's what those cards were. Hazmat shield, a two four seven. Wow! So it's actually pretty easy to hit that with that shield. It's got a decent amount of strength. Um, block two and adds two to all hit locations. That's pretty good. That's probably gonna cost a crap load. Oh, it's rare here too. So let's get that out of the way. I didn't think it'd be rare here. Okay. So let's go over the rare gear first. We got the dragon vestments. We got the celestial spear. We got the hazmat shield. Uh, two of those. Husk of Destiny. Um, you're cursed. Uh, your destiny is fulfilled. You are always insane. That's pretty neat. So regardless of what your insanity, you're always considered insane. And then Regal Edge, 152, sharp. Uh, gain plus one speed, plus four strength when attacking with this weapon if you have a constellation. And it's got a red and green affinity lock-ins here, and then the Celestial Spear has a blue top affinity lock-in there. So that's kind of neat. I like that. Some of that rare gear is pretty awesome looking. Alright, so now we have the um, dragon armor. So here's the dragon skull helm. It's got two puzzle piece locks of its three red lock-ins. Uh, you gain plus one to all severe injury rolls, and you ignore Shattered Jaw. That's pretty good. And I like it gives you the option of locking into two of those three. Uh, here's some Dragon Gloves. It's got the top blue, uh, right green. So, that, the Dragon Mantle. Uh, has a red, blue, and two greens. And each of these is giving four armor per slot. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then if you have all four of these locked in at the start of the showdown, you beat your chest mighty and gain survival up to the survival limit. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it doesn't even matter if you have survival going into it or not, or if you lose it all during the hunt. You get it all back with that guy. Uh, dragon belt. Red and a blue. If you get them puzzle piece locked in, uh, you are not knocked down from suffering a severe or heavy injury. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Dragon Skull. Ooh! Ooh, look at that! So that's pretty neat. That's something new with this, is there's different Dragon Skull Helms that they do this... Oh, God. Let's put those down. 
I'm holding on to 15 cards at once. Alright, so here's two different Dragon Skulls helms, but they're the same. Uh, it's the same item, but it looks different. That's kind of neat. I don't know if that's intended or not, or to give variation to people's armors. But they do the same thing. They have the three different red affinities and do the same thing if you lock it in. Next we have the dragon gloves, which I think we already looked at, right? Yep, so there's dragon gloves here. So this is another variation on the dragon gloves there. Same affinity, same lock-ins, dragon mantle, same things for that. Dragon belt, dragon boots, plus two movement during your act. Uh, ooh, dragon chakram. So there's that Xeno Warrior Prince's thing. Uh, it's a 263, range 3, that's pretty awesome. If you hit the monster, it gains minus 1 evasion until the end of the round. Limit once per attack. So, you can only do it once. So there's that. Dragon Bolt, that's a 166. Devastating 1, I love devastating. Ever since I discovered it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, shielded Quiver. Mm. Ooh, that's pretty neat. So if you have this quiver, you can gain the benefit of any arrows you have in your gear grid more than, or a second time, or one additional time per showdown. So you can shoot with that, those arrow, those one-shot use arrows a second time. That's pretty awesome. That's something that's always kind of bothered me about getting arrows. I've never really gotten them because of that. So that's good to know. Uh, here's a blast shield. It's a 174. Uh, add one to all hit locations, and then you block one but uh, you get the priority target token. Which is good if you want to be a tank. Talon Knife 264, paired, two blue affinities. Uh, if all of your attack rolls hit, gain Savage and Deadly, holy cow. That's gonna be good for uh, another Qatar. So that's gonna be good for, for a Qatar Master, or somebody with high accuracy. Uh, Blast Sword 264, it's got a green and a red infinity. Uh, it can actually block, that's pretty cool. And then you gain a survival when you do block. Hmm. Uh, nuclear Knife, good to know. The 363 Dagger, got two blue, green bottom, and a red right affinity. And if you get three of them, or you know, blue, red, green, uh, the edge is suffer you know, spending an activation, the edge ignites. You suffer three brain damage, which your next attack with this weapon gains devastating one. Wow. That's pretty good. That's pretty crazy. Not sure. I, I'm, I'm, I'm less of a fan of daggers as the game progresses because of the low strength they offer. But, uh, you know, barring certain builds, like, or, but with certain builds, it actually is a pretty good. Daggers are still pretty awesome at the end of the game. Uh, here's a nuclear. Here's the nuclear scythe. Uh, it's a two six four scythe, uh, two handed. Has two red and a blue affinity. Reach two. That's nice to know. And then if you lock in those puzzles affinities, you can spend an activation to ignite it and gain devastating one, much like the dagger. That's pretty nice. Here's a blue power core, all nuclear gear cards in your gear gain deadly too. So back to the scythe, it has the nuclear keyword in here, and so does the dagger. And deadly too is pretty awesome. That's that's something that you don't really see. Like deadly is, is hasn't been something you see really that much in the core set. So I'm glad that this is expanding or exploring that a little bit. And then a red power core, all nuclear gear cards in your gear, gear gain sharp, which is uh. That's to add 1d10 to your strength to, in order to hit. So if you had a red power core, a blue power core, and those daggers, that becomes a pretty formidable combo already, because then you'd have daggers that are sharp, deadly, and devastating. So that's nuts. All right, guys, well, I think that's it for this expansion. Uh, as you can see, this is a lot of stuff they put in here. Lots and lots of... You know, plastic, lots of cards, two different monsters, some pretty good options for fighting arts. Uh, you have these uh, uh, celestial or the astrology symbols or whatever. Um, 
Oh yeah, did I forget to mention that there's new uh, settlement card for to, to accommodate the new Dragon King expansion, as well as new survivor cards for the Dragon King expansion. So those are two really cool things that I'm really excited to look into for this, uh, and you know, settlement events as well, or settlement locations as well. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this expansion. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like it, leave a comment if you want. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, but until next time, adios.